All right, coming right back at your nine spiral. Fair use, YouTube fair use. Uh, we're cooking. We're having a cookout. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Let's cook. Let's cook them up. I've been waiting on this one. You know, I was headed out to my brother house, man. It's some years back, man. I say about about ten. And uh I seen this joker. Uh I'm on O Nat, right? O National. I'm headed to my brother house. I see his church on O National, O Nat. And uh I seen this joker pull up at a red light. In a Bentley. Bumping a needle baker. And looked at me and threw up his head. I turned the other way. Let's cook. Mm hmm. Chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. I've been waiting on your ass, boy. I pray, I pray you'll never be the same again. I, please don't let these little motion pictures fool you. To make you think it wasn't all that that he went through. Come on with it, Do man. you understand? I mean, how would you like your flesh ripped open? When they were finished, it looked like raw hamburger meat. Come on, Mr. Dollar. It Damn. wasn't just some whips on his back. Can we get to it? These stripes that came and ripped his flesh, tore his flesh off. My goodness. Why would he allow himself to go through this brutality? In verse 53. Come on, man. Verse 4. All right. Well, I want to read verse 3 because this is the oppression part. He was despised you and rejected of men. You do your a man thing. of sorrow acquainted you do your with grief. Thing. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs. Underline our griefs. It wasn't his, it was ours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Surely he hath borne our griefs all right, and all right. carried, underline, our sorrows. Not his, but ours. So the first thing that tells you is he didn't do this for him. <sighs> Yet we, we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Okay. But, I, but why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? Why were you so brutalized? But he was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. All right, stop right there, Mr. Dollar, because you got a problem here, right? We got a few problems. And I'm going to tell you why we got a problem, but I'm going to bring you some help. And we're going to deal with this blood. Matter of fact, let's deal with this blood right now. We're going to deal with the blood, right? Leviticus 18, 21. And you shall not let any of your descendants pass through the fire to Molech. Nor shall you profane the name of the Most High. Hoa. I am the Most High. So you see, Mr. Dollar. The most high ain't with blood sacrifice. Hmm? Brutal treatment mm -hmm. that was dished out to Jesus. He was so battered it couldn't easily be recognized. The, the scripture says in Isaiah 52, 14, wow. as many were astonished at him because his image was so marred. And Isaiah 52, 14. He's not talking about Jesus. He's talking about Ezekiel. And we're going to walk the doggy. But let's deal with this blood. 14 says it was marred more than any man and his form more than any son of man. What he was saying that there was nobody that was so messed up in appearance like Jesus was. How fuck you know? 
Would you do? <laughs> now, this was the first major point through which the blood of Jesus flowed out. But the question has always been. What's with this blood shit, man? Leviticus 3. 17. This shall be a perpetual statue throughout all your generation. In all your dwellings. You shall neither eat fat nor blood. But you pass it around in your church. And you put a label on the communion. Why is y'all worshiping blood, man? The Most High said he hears the blood. It is the life force. It cries out to him when it's shed unjustly. Genesis 4 and 10. And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me, even from the ground. We got some issues, Mr. Creflo. Why did he shed his blood through the body? Mm -hmm. The answer is clear in scripture. Go with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. Isaiah, chapter 53. If you got on makeup, boy. I pray, I pray you'll never be the same man, again. come I, on, man, with this dramatic Please don't let shit. these little motion pictures fool you. Get to it, man. To make you think it wasn't all that that he went through. Because you got some problems. Do you understand? I mean, how would you like your flesh ripped open when they were finished it looked like raw hamburger meat what about my ancestors huh what about the lynching and hanging it wasn't just some whips on his back these stripes that came and ripped his flesh tore his flesh off who bore the sins of Israel, huh? But first, we're going to deal with, I want you to deal with you, Mr. Bentley. I think it was a ghost Bentley, too. I want you to deal with Hosea chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, right? For the children of Israel shall abide many days without king or prince, without sacrifice. So don't tell me nobody will sacrifice for me. Or sacred pillar without ephod or teraphim. And afterwards, the children of Israel shall return and seek the most high their power and Dawid their con. And they shall fear, show reverence to the most high and his goodness in the latter days. Why? Would he allow himself to go through this brutality? In verse 53, Come on. verse 4. Well, I want to read verse 3 because this is the oppression part. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Uh -huh. Surely he hath borne our griefs. Underline our griefs. It did shit for me. It wasn't his, it was ours. Surely he had borne our griefs Paul. and carried. 
Say hey to the people. Hi. Hi. That's my little niece. All right, my bad. That's my little niece, y'all. But we're going to pick it up at number four at four. We're going to pick it up at four. Uh, since uh, Mr. Cruffalo, uh wants to be all dramatic, you know, with the blood. He want to give you visuals. All the, f the it's ripping the flesh and the blood is running. Bullshit. Number four. Surely he has borne our grief. Now, ignorantly, they think that this is Isus. Okay, there were no J's back then. J's didn't come about to what? Late 17, 18? Okay? Surely he has borne our griefs. This is Ezekiel. Creflo. You just like the rest of them. Y'all never talk straight. You go in and out. You never read in context. Before and after. And carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken. Smitten by Hawa and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our inequities. This is Ezekiel. He bore the sins back then. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. Ezekiel. And by his stripes we are healed. Ezekiel bore the sins. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Most High has laid on him the inequity of us all. Creflo Dollar. Bill, Ezekiel bore the sins. Here, right here, back then. We're going to prove it. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Watch this. Watch this. You know, they always say that. Watch this now. Watch this now. Watch it. Watch this. Watch this. Yet he opened not his mouth. Let's go. Ezekiel chapter 3, 23 through 26. And so I arose and went out into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Most High stood there, like the glory which I saw by the river Chabar, and I fell on my face. Then the spirit, the Ruach, entered me and set me on my feet and spoke with me and said to me, Go, shut yourself inside a house, and you, O son of man, surely they will put ropes on you and bind you with them, so that you cannot go out among them. And I will make your tongue cling to the roof of your mouth, so that you shall be mute and not be able to rebuke them. For they are a rebellious house. So the Most High made Ezekiel's mouth tongue cling to the roof of his mouth. Isaiah 53, 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. Ezekiel 3, 26. I will make your tongue cling to the roof of your mouth. 
Hmm? So that you should be mute and not be able to rebuke any of them. They are a rebellious house. Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 4 through 6. Let's get it. Lie also on your left side. And lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it. According to the number of the days that you lie on it. You shall bear their iniquity. Hmm? Verse 5. For I have laid on you the years of their iniquity. According to the number of the days, 390 days. So you shall bear the iniquity of the house of Israel, Creflo. But the most high one finished with him. Put some respect on Ezekiel. And when you have completed them, lie again on your right side. Then you shall bear the iniquity of the house of Judah 40 days. I have laid on you a day for each year. Hmm? And he, he said something in his book to really make it a lot clearer so you can understand exactly what happened here. He emphasized Instead of ours, he said, mine. Mine. He took my grief and my sorrows. Say that. He took my grief and he took my sorrows. Uh, a translation for the word grief here is pain. Mr. Cruffalo, I got a question for you. Is not Israel referred to as the most high's firstborn son? Huh? Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says the Most High, Israel is my son, my firstborn. Hmm? So you see, Creflo, it couldn't be Jesus or whoever you want it to be. Who died on the cross? Because, well, let's just get it. Matthew 27, verse 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, O G O D, my G O D, my G O D. Why has thou forsaken me? No, he can't be the guy. Uh -uh, nah. There is no connection to the Messiah in this chapter at all. It's talking about the troubles that happened to the nation of Israel in the days of destructions. If you're going to read the chapter before, if you're going to read the chapter after, you're going to understand the context. You're going to understand where that chapter is located. But because that someone hundreds of years ago or 
even 1500 years ago, claimed that that verse, that that chapter is talking about Jesus, it became like a known thing that now that chapter is the evidence for the Messiah. It's not true. And so we're left with a choice, right? Deuteronomy 30, verse 11 through 20. For this commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say who will ascend into Shamaim for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very near in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, and that I command you today to love the Most High, Hawah, to walk in His ways, and to keep His commandments, His statutes, and His judgments, that you may live. and multiply and the most high your power will bless you in the land which you go to possess but if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away to worship of the gods and serve them I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan, the Yarden, the Colorado River to go and possess. I call Shamahim and earth as a witness today against you, Moshe says, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. that both you and your descendants may live. That you may love the Most High, your power. That you may obey His voice and that you may cling to Him. For he is your life. And the length of your days. And that you 
may dwell in the land which the Most High swore to your fathers, Israel, to Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakwa, to give them. <gasps> wow.